Alright, I am back with my first Wonderlands video, something I probably should have done closer to Embargo, uh, but I was busy writing my uh, kind of normal review, my scored review of the game, um, and now I am finding that I have circled back around to it. Uh, I wasn't sure how much long-term playtime I would invest in it, but it has proven to be kind of very useful as a game that I can play uh, with a newborn because I can pause it. Uh, I need to pause it frequently to run around and do baby-related things. Uh, this is actually the second take of this video, because as I started recording the first video, uh, I was called away for a diaper change, so um, we'll see if we get to take three here. But um, fundamentally, Wonderlands is kind of an interlude between uh, Borderlands 3 and Borderlands 4, even though that hasn't really been officially announced. Like, they are doing Borderlands 4, I don't know if they'll call it that exactly, but they probably will. We've seen this before with um, the uh, pre-sequel and then the kind of interim project that was not Borderlands, was Battleborn uh, from Gearbox, which we all know was sort of a big tragedy where they were trying to chase a lot of different objectives and ultimately that was not a success. Uh, Wonderlands, in contrast, is a success. They took pretty much the one thing that everyone universally likes about Borderlands, um, which is the... A Tiny Tina DLC from uh, Dragon's Keep, and they turned it into a full game. Um, this is definitely a, a pull game. It is definitely not on the scale of a full Borderlands game, but I kind of like that in a lot of ways. Um, I just have been playing it on my second playthrough with a different combination of classes, and that's meant, you know, I've had to redo the story campaign, but since the story campaign is not as exhaustingly long as... Borderlands 3 or Borderlands 2, um, that's not that much of a chore, and some, you know, a good chunk of it is optional, so uh, hitting level 40 on two classes was not the biggest of deals, and then you can kind of work your way into the end game. Um, I maybe was a little harsher in my review than kind of in hindsight I should have been. I think I gave it like a 7.8 out of 10. The average scores were around like an 81 or something, or an 83, I don't know, but pretty much on par with Borderlands 3, and uh, this was a... a pretty big win for Gearbox. I know they were really celebrating those scores and the reception for it. Um, I guess a lot of a lot of what bothered me with Wonderlands that did actually bother me was things that are kind of just endemic to Borderlands as a franchise where I'm like, okay guys, like we just gotta move on already. Like I am ready to see this series evolve in more meaningful ways. So I might be punishing Wonderlands for things that have been around for a long time more than I should have. And I, I do recognize the constraints of this game, where this was made from, you know, all existing Borderlands, you know, tech and assets and engine and all that. Uh, and they did made the entire game while working from home, which is also an additional form of challenge. Uh, and given those stipulations, it turned out really well. It's just that I am very tired of a lot of kind of things that Borderlands does that it is not really moving on from. Uh, this has been said elsewhere, but the UI remains kind of one of the worst in the entire genre of, of game. Like, Borderlands UI has not changed any meaningful way in, like, I, I don't know, a decade and a half. I don't even know how long it's been, but, like, it is it is extremely bad. It, in Wonderlands, it is very poorly formatted for PC to the point where, like, you have to use arrow keys to navigate some of the menus because, like, clicking your mouse doesn't work. And, like, it's, it's extremely strange. Um, very bad for managing gear, very bad map, everything like that, but again, these are kind of ongoing problems. Uh, I remain somewhat tired of some of the kind of, quote, staples of Borderlands, which involves running around opening a large amount of things. Like, I'm so tired of opening ammo chests and money chests, and like, I'm just, I'm a little exhausted from that system. Very sick of uh, explosive barrels, namely getting killed by explosive barrels, and then <laughs> being unable to... Uh, revive myself if there are no more enemies around. I'm pretty sure this hap that happens in this video, which I am doing a, a Chaos Dungeon run, where I think that exact same thing happens. Thankfully, it doesn't tank my entire run or anything, but that happens. I swear I swear, I get killed by explosive barrels at least 50% of the time compared to enemies, so um, things like that kind of uh, remain issues. The, the kind of, you know, loot explosions are always fun to a certain extent, but as you'll see at the end of this video, like, there's you, you pay money for, like, kind of target farmed slot loot, and then it just dumps it onto the ground. And, like, if you have a lot of, uh, you know, turn-ins, you, you just get the entire ground, like, covered in, in purple loot, essentially, that you have to sort through. And, it, like, it's a nightmare to, to try and do that. So there's just uh, so many things about kind of mechanics that I think can change. Um, the visuals are interesting, because Borderlands has this, like, 
visual identity that has always been, you know, kind of fixed with this cell shaded style that it may or may not have stolen from a game a long time ago, but now it's, you know, Borderlands aesthetic. Uh, in this case, I think um, we really, really kind of got to see the true capabilities of some of the environment artists here. I think one thing Wonderlands does extremely well is take the um, Borderlands art style and take it to really kind of interesting, diverse new locations with the fantasy setting. I thought they did a really good job of that. Um, one thing that is a little bit exhausting at this point is how I would say individual characters and enemies look. They're, they're looking pretty rough. The NPCs in this game, faces especially, like no one looks really great anymore and I, I think there are ways to do an animated style you know even keeping with the kind of borderlands um type of animation to to make it just a little more advanced now and i, I you know it's it's hard to switch around from games like you know horizon horizon forbidden west to a game like this where these are like demented mannequins kind of talking at you and i look at something like arcane where that's like a really stylized animation thing and obviously that's a tv show but I would like to see kind of Borderlands inspired by things like that, where they kind of learn to uh, evolve their character animations in particular. Um, I think their environment in animations are kind of on track for where they need to be, uh, but character animations are going to need a lot of work. Um, I am okay with the experimental nature of Wonderlands, uh, making your own class and then doing this kind of uh, class combination system. Um, it works, it doesn't work. I. I think the series does need to stick with kind of intrinsic Vault Hunters. I think you are kind of... You're, you're losing something a bit by not having um, kind of set Vault Hunters in this, which has been a series tradition for so long. I think it's a good experiment, and I'm not upset that they did it. Uh, and yet, I, I do find you kind of just lack an identity with these kind of mishmash of classes. The class combination thing is, is interesting, but it very much seems like... Uh, you very, you know, certain classes are supposed to go with certain classes, and combining many of the classes doesn't really make a whole lot of synergistic sense. Uh, so, you know, I have this is my Berserker um, Stab a Mancer thing, which is mostly focused on, you know, when you combine those two, that's really focused on melee, but as you'll see, I don't do a ton of melee here. Uh, I still, melee, like, they gave us melee weapons, there are, you know, multiple classes based around melee damage. Because everyone's always making, you know, there, there's a, you're able to make melee builds on pretty much every Borderlands class to some extent. Uh, but I, I maintain that even with the kind of renewed focus on melee here with the weapons and everything, it still does not feel very good. And I, at least not compared to the gunplay. You know, I'll, I'll use Destiny 2 as an example of like they just introduced the Glaive as like first person uh, melee weapon. And like, I think that feels really good. I think they did a good job with that. And yet... Borderlands with these axes and swords and scythes and things like it just it feels too floaty uh, it doesn't really connect with enemies in the way I'd like uh, and it, in some ways it feels worse than like past melee builds like with Amara in Borderlands 3 she has this like rush to an enemy and slap them skill whereas like I haven't seen really any skills like that here yet um, you know one thing you'll notice is like I'm still in the really early end game here so I, I am I think there's 20 chaos levels i'm at chaos level 2 because i just finished the campaign on this character so i, I can't fully speak to like a, a super kitted out uh <laughs> version of these characters i know a lot of like borderlands content creators have gone kind of nuts with builds already um but i am not there yet i just across two playthroughs now i have not really liked melee um i do really like spells i think spells are a really cool addition uh, especially in terms of how the randomization effects work with them um, you know, Borderlands always kind of brags that it has thousands and thousands of guns or whatever, but, you know, fundamentally, they all fall into some pretty kind of regimented slots, uh, where spells, I, I think there's a lot more potential in spells where, say you have, like, I forget what, the, I think it's called, like, the Cataclysm or something. So, like, you have a base level Cataclysm that's, like, sort of, it, it summons, like, a meteor falling out of the sky, uh, and it does, like, AoE damage to an enemy. I have seen variants of this spell that do anything from, like, summon literally like a meteor the size of a planet because of like certain certain modifiers on the spell to you know do a huge explosion to i've seen a spell that is like oh this one has 7x projectiles so instead of one thing it's like seven different meteors raining down so like i i think there's a lot more kind of interesting diversity that they did with spells than even what they've done with weapons in the past and i think that is probably the best new gameplay edition here that's why i cho chose a uh, spell shot for my first class so i could do a wield spells because i knew that was probably going to be a really interesting part um the guns the guns are 
really similar to Borderlands. I mean, they even use the same kind of archetypes and stuff. And, like, I didn't really expect them to reinvent the wheel here. There's some fun little, like, you know, animation tweaks and things. And there's some weapons that are more uh, crossbow-ish than, than normal guns that are, are pretty cool. So I, I, I kind of think they did the best with what they, they could here with the weapons. Again, I only have a scarce handful of legendaries. Um, one of my favorites so far is there's a crossbow that has... It's like a crossbow pistol that has one shot with just like insane crit damage and insane crit ricochet so like if you if you land it it's just like a one hit kill on a lot of enemies that's pretty fun um the build i'm using here is mainly around freezing enemies i have like big frost damage boosts and like damage to slowed and frozen enemies and things like that so i have like an smg and then a, a rifle that rifle's not even max level and it still does a lot of work um that reminds me one thing this game does well is scaling Borderlands used to kind of make you refarm all your gear every two levels because the scaling would just go crazy and you you would start getting rocked by enemies. Um, in my first playthrough, I think I was using a level 30 weapon for the last 10 levels of the game, like even going into the end game. Like some of these weapons are just able to be carried on like very, very far into the game. So I, I think they've played around with scaling a little bit to make it a bit more forgiving, which I definitely appreciate. Um, that has been a, a big issue with Borderlands in the past, and I think they've kind of uh, rectified that in, in a lot of ways here, and I think they've done a good job with that. Uh, again, that is probably not going to hold true if you keep scaling up the chaos levels and stuff, but at least in terms of your story playthrough, you're never going to feel like, oh, I can't make progress, i got to go farm some crap, and like i got to replace everything with like green weapons until I get a better drop. Like That never really happens, and you're able to use a lot of your favorites for, I would say, a lot longer than... Uh, we've seen in Borderlands before. Um, heading into the end game, I think there's some pros and cons here. I mean, one of the cons is like this is really the only end game thing right now are these chaos dungeons. Uh, you know, Borderlands has uh, all manner of different end game things, whether it's takedowns or arenas or like, you know, there's a lot of different things. But here it is really just chaos dungeons and they only really have the resources to build out one form of end game at the moment other than randomly farming stuff in the story but that's not really a thing uh that said chaos dungeons are really good um i think they're they're really well organized they are inspired by diablo to a certain extent but i really like the kind of choose your own path choose your own difficulty progression uh, nature of it where you can pick your modifiers as you go uh, choose to get buffs choose to forego buffs to get more rewards things like that uh and then i, I like the idea of you know, doing these rank up things where you need to pass a certain bar to get to the next level until you get to level 20. And that kind of, you know, means you'll be refining your build and, you know, just continuing to, to build on it uh, in a way to become more powerful. Um, right now, I, like, I just got my first kind of slate of level 40 loot, so this is far from an optimal build. And, like, I don't, I, I dislike melee so much, I might even just respec into freeze without much melee uh, attached to this and might change that entirely. <laughs> we'll see. I do really like the, the Ghost Blade um, move that the Stabomancer has, which I'm using as my main move, and that does employ your melee damage without actually being like you swinging your melee weapon, so that is one reason to spec into melee damage, and that does a uh, solid amount of damage. So, um, One problem with the Chaos Dungeons that I'm like not the biggest fan of is enemy density. Like As you'll see in some of these, like enemy density is really poor. <laughs> It's just, it's almost non-existent in some of these segments where you will just, like, some of these you can just stand in one place and enemies will, like, slowly filter to you. If there's no objective or you have to, like, defend something, you, you'll, you like, be roaming around the map. And, like, you will have to, like, hunt down individual enemies because of how scarce enemy density is. And, like, if you've played, you know, past Borderlands endgame activities, there's just tons and tons of enemies everywhere. So I don't really understand why this decision was made. And I, I think this does make... You know, e even for my friends that are at higher levels here, I I've heard that one of the general problems is, like, this is just ultimately too easy between uh, enemy density and then a lot of just sort of, like, one-shot boss builds that are, are a little easy to um, implement. Uh, it's it's kind of lacking maybe some endgame challenge, and once you kind of just are able to speedrun Chaos Dungeons at level 20, which a lot of people are doing in week one, you know, there's not really a whole lot more to do past that. Um, I've heard the additional content for this is going to be more kind of endgame based stuff, so we will see if that kind of solves any of the, the problems here. Um, I know there are like secret bosses in Chaos Dungeons that are, are harder, uh, but even those don't really seem to be on, on the level of something like an invincible boss or something. And I, I feel like if you're doing a Borderlands game, you need 
an invincible boss in there somewhere. I mean, I don't... Borderlands 3, I don't even think, launched with one, but they got a couple eventually through additions and stuff, so... Uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm still pretty early on here, and I am not, like, consuming this in huge doses anymore. Like, I'm playing 20 minutes there, 30 minutes there, 40 minutes there, um, as I'm doing dad things, so I'm, I'm kind of progressing through this relatively slowly, which is fine, because I'm not really... You know, I'm not, I don't need to actively be covering it right now. Uh, again, I know I should be playing Elden Ring. That is also a game that I do not think lends itself terribly well to also managing a newborn since you can't really pause it in a traditional sense. Uh, so I've been sticking with Wonderlands for now. I may do, so I did I did Spellshot Clawbringer. I have Berserker Stabomancer, and I might do um, Grave, whatever, Grave Warden? I don't remember, Spore Warden? Whatever those last two are, Spore Warden and Grave gravestone i don't remember you know what i'm talking about i might do those two as the last one although going through the entire story campaign again might be a little exhausting uh i will oh i, I did really like the overworld that was like a really cute addition that the game didn't really need to have but it, it just felt like it broke up um the kind of main game in a way where it's just like these little individual count up combat encounters little individual puzzle solving things uh shrines with you know very useful kind of permanent buffs that you, you're hunting down it was just a nice break from kind of Go to this level, do five, you know, do a main mission and five submissions. Go to the next level. Like, it's a good break kind of in between all that stuff, uh, which is something I think nor normal Borderlands has never really had. Um, given what they did with this, with limited resources, uh, I am very excited about the future of this franchise. I think Borderlands has a very um, bright future ahead of it, and I think they've learned a lot of good lessons since Borderlands 3 uh, Vanilla. The DLCs were all pretty much better than the base game, so they improved there. I think they've improved in a lot of ways uh, with Tiny Tina. And uh, I'm very excited to see kind of the post-launch content they end up producing for this, although I don't know when exactly that's coming. But I think this game reviewed well, I think it's selling okay, and so hopefully it gets some, some good post-launch support. Though I don't need anything that's like a true new live service game because I cannot even keep up with the ones I have already. So <laughs> uh, I'm okay with that. But anyway, um, those are my kind of thoughts here in a somewhat disorganized fashion. But I did want to kind of talk about this game given how much I've been playing it, uh, given that I did every review copy of it and that I did ultimately enjoy it quite a bit. So, and uh, I'm sorry for punishing it for some of Borderlands uh, original sins, but I can't help myself. So. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.